Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head down to the south of Bavaria in Germany once again. This is a brewery who I've reviewed a couple of beers from now but I think it was around a year since I reviewed my last one from them so very curious to try this one and this is one of my favourite styles of traditional German beer. And you guys if you've watched the channel before you know much how much I love traditional German beers and in particular this style. So for this one we're going to return it to the Herzoglich Bayern. Irish's Brauhaus Tegensee or the Tegensee Brauerei for short and we're having a taste of their Kirinus Dunkler Doppelbock today. So this one comes in at 7% ABV and I've reviewed the um, the Tegensee Hell and the Tegensee Dunkel for you before but as you'll know this you know I've reviewed a lot of the the very kind of famous German Munich, Munich Doppelbocks in particular and it's a style that I really enjoy so I was very curious to see how uh, this one turned out. So yeah very much looking forward to this and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So a huge shout out in this video as well to Chris Contreras, an American guy who's been watching the channel. He was on a trip to uh, Germany and asked me if I wanted any beers sent up and I asked him if he was, if possible he could get this one. This is a beer that otherwise I would probably never be able to get a hold of because I'm very unlikely to go to Germany at Christmas time actually. So this is one that I was very curious to review. Christmas time, you know, November, December of course is a uh, doppelbox season. So a huge thank you to Chris for making this review possible. He says he wants to send me some Belgian lambics and things like that. He's an American guy that lives in uh, in Belgium, so maybe you'll see some more beer reviews thanks to him over the next little while. So yeah, as I say, looking forward to this one, and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the links to my other reviews that I've done from Brauhaus Tegens here before. Um, this is the very first time I'm trying their Doppelbock. There's all the usual sort social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the German beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to, and as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about the history of the brewery then. So the Herzogliches Brauerei Stuber uh, Tegernsee, the Ducal Brewery of Tegernsee basically, are from the small town of Tegernsee in Miesbach County in Bavaria, in the very southern part of the country, uh, very close to the Austrian border. But the Tegernsee Brewery apparently traces its roots back to a brewery that was started in 1050 by the Benedictine Monastery in the town, which had itself been founded back in 746. So the brewery company in its current form, though, traces back to 1675 when Abbot Bernd Wenzel moved the monastic brewing rights from Holzkirchen to Tegernsee and the brewery was known for a period as Tegernsee close to Brauerei, basically the Tegernsee or Abbey Brewery. But apparently Duke Maximilian I, who was a lawyer in Ingolstadt, had a record of all the Bavarian breweries from the year 1604 and there was no mention of Tegernsee. So this suggests that the old brewery had actually ceased operations and that this was the reason for the brewing rights being moved. But in 1817, after Germany had gone through secularisation, the brewery and monastery was purchased from Karl Josef von Drechsel by the King of Bavaria, Maximilian I Josef. And at this point it was renamed the Königlich Braunus Brauhaus Tegernsee, which basically translates to the Royal Brown Brew House of Tegernsee. And later it became known as Herzogliches Bräustuber of Tegernsee, which is the Ducal Brewery of Tegernsee. And since this time, the brewery has been in the Wittelsbach family and it's currently run by Duchess Anna Maria, who's the daughter of Prince Max, Duke in Bavaria. And to Today the brewery produces around 130,000 hectolitres of beer per year and they have a restaurant in one of the wings of the former monastery which is run by Peter Huber and the bottling plant for the brewery can be found in Gmund. So um, yeah, a brewery that has you know quite an illustrious history if you like. It has been around on and off for... Um, for quite a little while and uh, as I say I've had some very positive experiences from the other beers that uh, I've had from these guys. As always if you want to learn a little bit more about the, the brewery history and stuff like that you can look at the restaurant menu and things like that. Take a look at the uh, brewery website in the description below and they do have a restaurant in Munich as well actually very close to the Hauptbahnhof if I'm remembering correctly. They do have um, at the Tegernsee Keller or something like that there it's called. Um, I never got the chance to go into that one because we were doing the beer gardens and stuff but um, I'm sure you'll get some very very good food and also I know some very very good beer there but the other beers you'll get from these guys are the Tegernsee Hell, the Hellerbock, the Leicht, 
Pills Spezial, Dunkel, and of course this guy here, the Kirinus Doppelbot. They do also have an export Hellas as well, which is called 1806 uh, Max the First Joseph Jubileums Export. But basically, Max uh, Max the First Joseph uh, Jubilee Export beer. So um, yeah, I guess a little bit stronger than their regular Hellas. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. As I say, if you want to learn a little bit more, check out the brewery website in the description below. But let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. Then we can. Get rid of the brewery notes. As I mentioned to you, this one is um, it comes in at seven percent ABV, which you know is, is about the standard you would expect for um, our Tavernsy Doppel. You can get ones that um, that are a little bit lighter than this in the Doppel box. Though you can also get some that are a little bit heavier than this. If I remember correctly, the um, the Eyinger Celebrator is around, you know, 7.5 percent, something like that. But you can see this one is very very nicely presented. There you can see. The coat of arms of the town Tegan. See, it's a very, very small place from what I gather, you know, just about a thousand people, something like that, maybe just a couple of hundred actually, you know, 800, somewhere between 800 and a thousand people. But you can see on the artwork here, very traditional, you can see the blue and white checks for Bavaria, and you can also see the old drawing of the um, the Benedictine monastery basically in Tegernsey around 746. So it's actually, you know, kind of quite big. There you can see the little top label on this one, again, that's the crest of the, uh, the old monastery monastery or the town from what I gather and you can see here is the standard Tegernsey uh, bottle cap on this one so um, yeah very very nicely presented this one Herz I guess this means Herzoglich uh, Tegernsey beer the HTB that they've got on it you can see that little symbol there and I've just noticed as well this one um, it's also got a little thing here um, Gebraucht nach dem uh, Reinheitsgebot basically brewed in accordance with the German Reinheitsgebot the four uh, kind of core ingredients of it like water, hops, malt and yeast and that is it for German beer so um, yeah really nicely presented beer this one very kind of um, very traditional as you'd expect this bottle of course is a half litre 500 milliliters so let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then so yeah nice little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get it out and into the glass one thing I will say about my glassware in this video is that you know normally you would drink this beer out of um, a German stein okay but um, I actually don't have a stein that is transparent so if I did it in the stein that I have you wouldn't be able to see the colour of the beer but generally as well I very much like the tulip glass because it's the best kind of all-rounder for all the different styles in my experience so just bear that in mind with this uh, this video, I know the Germans can be very picky about what uh, glassware you use for their different beers, but I find this tulip glass works for pretty much every single style. But um, yeah, if I hold this beer up to the light, then this one comes across as a very sort of dark mahogany colour. Then I've poured, I think, about two thirds of it into the glass here just now, so there's about 300, 350 millilitres in the the bottle in the glass here, somewhere around that region. But this one has a lovely kind of ruby edge to it, very very dark sort of mahogany colour. Maybe you could describe it as being a little bit of a kind of chestnutty colour, somewhere between a chestnut and a very dark red mahogany. You can see there's a solid finger and a half of a frothy, I would say a light sort of fawn kind of beigey coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head. If I hold it up to the light again, this beer is actually quite transparent but you're not going to see that on the camera just because of how, you know, the particular colour of the beer. I put my fingers behind the glass and just let you see that, but you're not really going to see how uh, transparent this beer actually is. But yeah, normally a Doppelbock can be um, pretty transparent actually, but it looks lovely. Um, nothing overall particularly surprising about this beer when you consider it as a Doppelbock in terms of its appearance. You know, usually they are this kind of very dark mahogany sort of uh, chestnutty colour, and that is exactly what you're getting from this one. You can see the head's just kind of gone down a little bit, and it's become very, very foamy. There were one or two little bumps in it there, but yeah, it looks absolutely lovely. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. Oh, that smells nice. I always enjoy the aroma of these beers. So yeah, with this one then, as you would expect, you've got a lovely bit of brown bready quality to this one. Um, some nice toasty brown sugars, and they're almost a little bit of a kind of treacly molasses sort of thing. It does have that kind of caramelised... Um, brown sugar sort of note to it. It has a little bit of sweetness to it at the same time, but it definitely has some of that more dark, syrupy, um, treacly molasses type brown sugar in there. It's a little bit toasted as well. Lovely sort of slightly sweet brown bread, almost pumpernickel kind of bread, um, German rye bread type notes coming out of this beer. Um, 
So yeah, maybe a little touch kind of woody or nutty, something like that as well. It definitely has a little bit of a kind of complexity in the malt base and you've got a little bit of a kind of um, biscuity quality to this beer as well. But you know, overall, it does actually look um, very, very nice and it, smell, it smells very, very nice, I should say. And we already know that it looks very nice. But yeah, um, lovely smelling beer this one and it has pretty much everything in the aroma you would expect from the style. If you um, take a look at the hoppy side of things, this one, it has a little touch. Yeah, definitely got a little touch of that kind of noble earthiness in there. I would guess that it would be um, Hallertau hops that they're using in this one. Yeah, um, definitely has a little bit of that sweet kind of typical German noble earthiness. A little bit of floral character, mainly leading to more towards the earthiness though I would say. And also a little bit of a kind of lighter grassiness and of course you can pick up just a little bit of a red fruity note out of this beer too. It's got a little touch of a kind of figgy note to it but maybe a bit of a more juicy kind of plummy figgy sort of thing as well. But um, yeah, very very nice smelling beer this one. It has all the different elements you would expect within the style. To me if I compare this to what I remember of the other famous doppel box that I've had, you know, this one to me strikes, it strikes me as a little bit more bready and a little bit darker in terms of its uh, brown sugar, maybe a little bit more kind of syrupy in that regard, but you know, overall the aroma of this one is very very nice and it has all the elements of this particular style like uh, like you would expect. So yeah, let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the Kirinus Doppelbock from the Brauhaus Tegernsee in Tegernsee, Miesbach County, Bavaria in Germany. Once again, a huge thank you to Chris Contreras for making this review possible and uh, yeah, hope you. I'm sure you'll see some more beers from him at some point soon. Let's get stuck in. Slange, Skull, Prost. Yeah. Now that's really nice actually. This one to me, it's actually striking me. I'm, I'm finding that a lot of the kind of doppelbocky flavours in this one are coming out a little bit more in the aftertaste actually. Um, to me, in, in the impact of this beer, if you talk about the impact of the beer, in the front of the taste, it's a little bit more like um, like a, a very, it's quite bready actually. It's a lot more bready in comparison to some of the other um, doppel box I've had. The sweetness is really coming out of this one a little bit later on. I would say that's my first impression of this beer. But yeah. I will say that this is a really nice, uh, another very very nice example of the style. If you get the chance to try this, have a go at it. Now is probably a very good time to kind of pick up some of these because you are at the end of the, the Doppelbox season. And I will say that about this beer. I'm reviewing this one for you um, in the kind of middle of February, if you like. So, yeah, this beer, it's been in the bottle a couple of months, but, you know, it should be, um, it should pretty much be, be all right at the moment. I think it says on the back here, um, the, 15th of the uh, 15th of February 2019. So, yeah, I'm drinking it pretty much when it's about to be kind of uh, finished, basically. Um, or just a little bit after, I should say, rather. But um, yeah, this one, the, the breadiness that comes out of this is is very, very nice. Um, yeah, the middle of your palate in this, then, you can feel some of that brown um, German bready malt just kind of that, that lovely, the one thing I've always found about the German malts is they're very, very smooth. I'd be very curious to know if it's Weiermann malts they're using in this from Bamberg. Very, very famous malt company, of course. But you can feel that just blank at the middle of your tongue. You've got that lovely brown bready quality that just goes right across the middle of your tongue. It's almost a little bit like a slightly rye bread, but not quite as spicy. Very, very smooth, lovely. German brown bready quality. Um, as you go further into the flavour, you can feel a little bit of the woody kind of flavours pushing their way out. If you go a little bit further forward on the palate and into the centre, um, you can pick up some of the woody notes. There's a little touch of a nutty quality in there as well. But right in the middle of your palate, you've got those lovely kind of brown sugary notes. Um, it's not quite as dark and syrupy as I was thinking it would be. It has a little touch of that, but it, become, it starts to become a little bit more biscuity, I think, the further you go into the flavour. Yeah, I'm finding as well, the more and more sips I take of this beer, the slightly sweeter it gets as well. But in the very centre of your palate, you've got that lovely kind of, um, that lovely bubble where it's almost like, the, where all these kind of caramelly brown sugary flavours are coming out. There's definitely a lot of a very toasted sort of 
treacly molasses kind of thing to this one. That sort of more um, almost syrupy brown sugar. It definitely has a little bit of that to it and it's got a sort of toasty, it's definitely got a little bit of a toasty almost well fired element to that but if you go right into the very centre of your palate it's more of a sweeter kind of caramel and the further you go into the flavour the more kind of biscuity it becomes actually. Like I said at the start this Doppelbock to me is striking me as being a little bit more bready and a little bit more biscuity compared to some of the other ones that I've come across. It's just not quite as syrupy in its um, in its kind of flavour, if you like, in the way that the flavours come out. But that's nice as well. I mean, the thing to remember with a Doppelbock is that it is actually a type of uh, of lager beer. You know, it's actually a very very strong lager beer. It uses the same yeast as you would ex as you would use in a Hellas and a Dunkel, right enough. Um, but this is just, this is really, really nice. I like what they've done with this beer. It's, it's definitely cool. And I like this when you go to these famous brewers. You have this style that you know very well, but they've all got their own little quirks and stuff like that. And I really like what this one is kind of bringing out. I've always loved that smooth, bready, malty quality in these uh, German traditional beers. And it comes out very nicely in this one. Like I was saying, if you come a little bit further forward on the palate, and um, you get a little touch of a woody note in there. If you move very just a little bit further forward from the very centre of your tongue too, you start to get a little touch of a nutty flavour. And that comes out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste. And it's really a bit of the sweeter caramel with some of the toasty elements there and some of the biscuity flavours that are lingering uh, into the aftertaste with this beer as well. But the malt base in this one, which of course is the focus of the Doppelbox style, is very, very nice. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, this one is kind of pretty much what you would expect. Back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of um, of earthiness there, but it's that kind of smooth but also slightly sweet earthiness that you'd expect from the German noble hops. As you come further forward along the side of your palate, that just smooths out a little bit and it kind of transitions uh, towards the front corners of your palate as being a little bit more kind of lighter and sort of florally and as you go round the very front curve of your palate, it's just a nice sort of lighter um, grassiness in there as well. And the earthiness actually builds, uh, that the way the earthiness comes out in this one actually builds a little a nice little bridge between the sort of woody and um, bready flavours of this beer and the kind of hoppy side of things. It's very well balanced this one, that's what I would say about this beer. And behind the front curve of the palate of course, that's where you get that nice little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer and again it's a sort of red fruity note that you're getting out of this one. So yeah, for me with this beer it's um, definitely a sort of very smooth kind of figgy sort of quality that comes out of this one. Um, it does have a sort of candied red fruit quality to it as well. As I always kind of reference with these beers, it's like the little heart-shaped sweets, the almost candied strawberry kind of flavour you get from those little heart-shaped sweets in the Haribo Star Mix. That's what's coming out the further you go into the aftertaste of this one. But it's a very, it's quite a nice, smooth, juicy, fruity quality. Just a little touch figgy. Um, and it just smooths out to be that sort of candied strawberry sort of fruit flavour you get at this one. Maybe even a little touch of a kind of, I don't know, it's maybe not quite black currant, something like that. It just has a little touch of an almost curranty type um, type juiciness to it. But overall, it's a lovely, lovely beer, this one. And, you know, from a brewery like Tegernsey, who do the Hellas and do the Dunkel very well, it's not surprising that they do a nice um, Doppelbock. As I say, the thing that distinguishes this one for me it's the way that the bready flavours kind of take the forefront of this one and the way that it's a little bit more kind of the way that the brown sugars are coming out it's a little bit more biscuity and bready this one compared to some of the other ones that I've had but a lovely beer nonetheless and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again it's cool to be able to try this one as I mentioned because it's, I would probably never be in Germany at Christmas time to pick up this beer for myself but yeah, in terms of the um, in terms of the, the mouthfeel of this one then I would say this beer is... Um, Yeah, mid-bodied beer, maybe pushing the top end of mid-bodied. Carbonation, very, very smooth. It's got that typical German Brauhaus smoothness, as I always like to call it. You know, the German beers, to me, the thing that can, one of the things that characterises German beers is that smoothness, and I always call it the Brauhaus smoothness. And um, the carbonation is just lovely and soft in this one. Very, very smooth beer. Um, overall, I'd say the mouthfeel on this one is a little bit oily, but again, you'd expect that from the, the Doppelbock because it's a more malt-forward beer and it, it is a little bit sweeter. Um, nice little touch of hoppy bitterness to this. I think you're looking around 30-ish IBUs, probably yes, 25-30-ish IBUs in this beer. 
a nice little balance in the malt base between the smoothness and the sweetness uh, and you've also got some lovely uh, juicy red fruity qualities in this one. The aftertaste for me starts to get a little tiny bit more roasty and toasty from those brown sugary elements but as I mentioned earlier beautiful beautiful beer this one and I'm quite happy that I was able to review this for you so a huge thank you to Chris again for making this review possible. This is one that I, otherwise I probably would not have been able to um, to review for you. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So this one is the Tegernsey Dunkler Doppelbock from Brauhaus Tegernsey or Brauerei Tegernsey, whatever you want to call them for short, or the Herzogliches Bayerische Brauhaus Tegernsey to give them their full name in Tegernsey Miesbach County in the southern part of Bavaria in Germany. And uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Thank you to Chris for making this one possible. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Tegernsey as well. And as always, um, um, you know, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. So this one was the Kirinus Doppelbock at 7% ABV, a lovely more bready, slightly biscuity Doppelbock compared to some of the others from Brauhaus Tegernsey in Miesbach in uh, Bavaria in Germany. Until the next time, it's Slange just now, Skull, and I will catch you guys very soon. Slange, Skull, Prost.